Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Sean, and I just wanted to let everybody know that um, yesterday I posted a video and I was telling everybody that I was feeling depressed and um, kind of down. It was around my birthday, you know, my birthday's coming up on the 22nd. And <clears throat> I don't usually gamble like this. I know once in a while I'll buy um, a ticket or numbers, uh, fancy five or something like that. And um, I'm usually pretty lucky. Uh, for some reason, in January, especially, I mean, sorry, in December, on my birthday, I'm, I'm very lucky. And then I had a subscriber or somebody, um, I don't know if they're a subscriber or not, tell me not to encourage gambling. And uh, first of all, I do not encourage gambling at all. I'm telling you, I'm test giving you a testimony of what just happened to me. And I'm going to explain the things that have been happening to me, and you can believe it or not. So... I have uh, been praying recently, and I, I visualize myself winning big money, and I ask God to help me so I can get Christmas gifts and things like that, and to get better, and I visualize this. Now, I went for my walk today, because my wife has the car, so I, I usually walk down to the Circle K, but my friend Rocky, he has a, a, he has a, a, a convenience store, and he, he's from Pakistan, and I've known him for about 10 years, so... I walked over there because it's a good stretch of the leg. It's a couple miles and uh, there, you know, and then you got to walk a couple miles back. So when I was a little kid, I went, I, I was born in Philadelphia, PA, right? And uh, when I was a little kid, uh, I um, was, I moved. My parent, my mom had to move away from Philadelphia because I had a very aggressive, abusive father. So my mom had to literally move me to Florida so this man wouldn't uh, hurt us. So that's, that's a true story, 100% fact. So I got to Florida around 79 as a little kid. So I was about eight or nine. I was born in 71. Around 80, I'd say. Let's just say 80, I got to Florida. And living in Philadelphia, everything's concrete. There's nothing, you know, I lived in South Philly. And then we would go to Northeast Philly to visit my relatives and stuff. So I lived like, that was a bit, basically all, all the experience I had was city concrete bridges monuments things like that until so like once a once a, a couple times a month i would say my dad when he wasn't being a, a jack off and, and you know beating my mom and i he would take us to uh to lancaster pa where all the amish are so we could buy pies you know, and things of that nature in, in different bakeries you know and because uh we had a big family back then and we used to go to church on saturday when they did church times and um uh, sunday um, we would go to our families and you know houses and then watch football and uh, do things like that. So I'm giving you a little backstory. So when I moved to Florida, we lived by a lake in D land. It's in the middle of you know it's wilderness and there's wild animals and shit like that and things I've never seen before. But what I, I uh, had a little jar and I went down to the lake or a little pond. It's like a pond, but we do fishing and stuff like that and get little chubs and all kinds of different fish. But I saw these things called tadpoles. And I was a little kid, I was like, and I didn't know what it was. I, and I didn't know there were frogs. So I take a jar and I went down and caught them. And then just on the way to this, the reason I'm telling you about this, on the way to the, um, to Rocky, my friend, there's a pond like that, you know, a little, a little, uh, a big piece of uh, uh, water and, and, and it's got, um, Everglade, Everglade look to it, the little forest and stuff. It's really, I'll, I'll videotape it and show it to you next time I walk over there. So I visualized me doing as a kid. I actually saw myself as a kid and you have to be very, very patient. Like you have to be really still because little, little mullets will fly, uh, go into the jar too. And um, you have to be very, very still. So on the way home from that, I went and bought this ticket. I was walking home. On the way home, I saw this pamphlet and guess what it's about it was on the ground i saw it it's about what frogs have a life cycle frogs are eggs frogs have a life cycle frogs are tadpoles see frogs have a life cycle frogs are tadpoles with legs see they got little legs and then in here again now dude what is the odds of walking home uh, and, and visualizing this stuff like when you're a kid? Um, can I see? 
and then finding a pamphlet about frogs. And then, as I said, two, yesterday I won 200 and today I won 100. Now, what that what what this guy's saying, hey, you know, don't promote gambling. Now, what I'm telling you, dude, if you win this money, like let's say you started off with $20, right? You say, I'll buy two tickets for $20 and I'm going to do a business with that, right? And that's all I'm buying, you know? Today, I only, you know, I got this one and then I got a Christmas tree one for $20. So I spent $30 and once again, it was rolling the dice because, you know, I did win some money yesterday, but after you pay things, you know, bills and things of that nature, because you've got to be responsible. The whole idea of you playing this is to win money so you can pay, pay things and do things. So when you get this money, which is a lot of money for some people and not, you know, some people like my buddy, uh, Jake the asshole, which I never knew this about him. And it's kind of cool. He's got a hobby of doing the slot machines and he's world class at it. The fella is good. And he's won like over a hundred thousand dollars playing slot machines over the years. And who was not know, you know, he doesn't seem like a fella that would do that like that, but it's his hobby. And that's cool. I mean, he doesn't encourage people to gamble. Well, he tells you, hey, if you was to go to Vegas or whatever, and you see a machine that has this, this, and this, this on it, you run to that son of a bitch because that's a sure winner. And he does what I do. Once you get your money, uh, you, you walk away, you know? That's how you don't become, lose everything. So what I was saying, if you already put $20 and say that $20 is gone, you would get your $80 and have that in your pocket and don't buy no more tickets. You, you got you buy two more if you spend 20 or if you spend 10 you buy one more and then you got ninety dollars and then you take a chance again and the same thing you know if you win another hundred or five hundred you just buy one ticket don't let the amount of money that you win make you change your decisions on why you're playing it to begin with now the main reason is win is million dollars which somebody just won yesterday and there's still a lot of prizes there's still a lot of million dollar chances too Somebody just won it just the other day, and that's why Rocky, my friend, was like, Sean, get one of those tickets, you know, if you're going to buy one. I was like, yeah, I've been hitting on that Christmas tree, bud, and I did the $30, uh, um, uh, what the hell is it, 300 uh, times, uh, and he's like, wow, you don't really, you, you but you know, because he's like, you think I'm cheap or whatever. I'm like, no, nah, man, that's a lot of money, 30 bucks, dude. And, you know, because some of these people that live in Florida retire. And what this man saying, or this, I don't know who, if it's a man or lady, uh, saying on my channel, hey, don't encourage gambling. My friend, if you was to go with me to Publix, and you'll see, what you, you, you're right about that part of it. But these people spend thousands of dollars, and but they hit for thousands of dollars. There's a lady just won $30,000 on a scratch-off. The, these people, you got a better chance, of, in my opinion, doing scratch-offs than trying to mess with state lotteries and things like that because it's the odds are astronomical and they rig those games. And I just show you this because I hear people saying that, oh, the scratch offs are rigged. No, I don't think so. They, you just, it's lucky, it's numbers. You see the number 43 that's there? Uh, I don't know what the hell that means in geometry or anything. It could mean something, but I've noticed odd numbers like that and 23 comes out and I've won on 11 and I've won on, like that won a lot on, on odd numbers and I keep an eye on that. And then when I, before I even buy this freaking thing, I'll say, hey, what number's the ticket on? And if I don't feel right about the vibe with, of what that series is, because I think there's 50, maybe there's 100. There's 100 tickets in these things. So if you go to buy this roll, you have to spend $1,000 to get 100 tickets. So we're right in the middle right there, you know? So you're going to know how many, you know, if you're going to play this kind of stuff, you download the app from your state and you look at the odds of what the, of what these tickets pay out. And the $30 ones are actually the best odds. You win in one out of every a two tickets, you know, it's like a 200 tickets or something like that, which is way lower. I mean, a way better chance of uh, odds than any of the other ones. I literally, you know, sometimes you cannot get anything. And then we call the we call it the Florida refund, where you get the same amount of money that you actually win. You know, like that you paid for. If you pay ten, you win ten bucks. But I saw this, I was like, oh man, I got ten bucks. And then I was like, oh man, there's another ten bucks. And then when I started getting to here, that's like uh, there's there's a you know thirty dollars. So there's there's ten, there's twenty, and then there's thirty, and then forty, and then fifty. I'm like, all right, I got it. I, this might be a hundred dollar ticket. And then I scratch over here, 10, another 10, and, a, and you can get a 21 
That's the thing. And it came all the way down to here and it came out to $100. But in this particular way, you can win by three, you know, three, the same people, the same thing. And then if you get, you know, one of those, a 10 or 21, you win that, that, that amount. And then diamonds, you know, I might have thrown one of these tickets away before a long time ago because I was dumb and didn't realize one diamond is 20 bucks. But I don't know. My wife checks the tickets, so she could have got that and, uh, you know, did, did, uh, did some money with her friend. You know, they go out and buy purses and stuff like that. Literally, um, you know, they spend a lot, of, they spend time together. They grew up like uh, me and Chad are schoolmates. My wife has a friend like that. And then uh, she'll find out that I went on tickets that I overlooked and um, she'll cash them in and go get something for herself and give me, give me my money and give us, because they were sharing. And as I say, dude, you, when I used to play poker a lot, I got really good at poker, okay? Texas Hold'em. And I would go to, uh, in, in, in uh, church, uh, Ben Salem, I'm sorry. They don't have it in Philly, but they have a casino in Ben Salem. And I'd go to the $2 poker table, and as soon as I won, like, say, I, my limit was, like, I'm going to win 300 bucks or 400 bucks, uh, you know, a few hundred. As soon as I hit that number, I'm out the table, right? But one time I got stuck at a $5 table and um, there was a Jewish fellow who was sitting next to me and um, there was a couple other people from different countries. And I was like, oh shit. I was like, oh fellas, I think I'm out of my league here. I don't have enough, you know, like, cause I only went to the table with 60 bucks and they could put your ass in in one hand, which one of the guys tried to do, but he got burnt. And once I got my 300 bucks, cause it was almost 300, I won $225. On, a, on that on that hand I ended up winning with a uh, straight flush diamond flush and um, <clears throat> got lucky on the river you know so that right there I could have been like oh I got my money and then I'm gonna just go after these people to try to take them out and you're not going to take them out <laughs> they have too much money these lit one guy literally had about six thousand or seven thousand over six thousand dollars on a table and chips easily it was no problem he could like just sit here all day and um, you gotta know when to walk away. And I shook her, you know, I shook her, wish everybody the best, shook their hands, wish them best luck, tipped the dealer uh, some money, and then uh, I left, you know. Uh, but that's how I do things. If I get a feeling, uh, and, you know, if I talk to God and I get a feeling about something, and I'm like, oh, what about this, or this ticket, or whatever, because I actually do shit to help people with with money and stuff. I actually go and go, go, go buy ramen noodles. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or nothing like that. I'm not on here for that. I'm just saying, I'm not a selfish person. And, and I don't think it's selfish to ask God to help you financially because we're in, we're in, we're literally in hell, you know, and things that are going on here is so barbaric and, and, and hellish that you, you have to use your mind that God gave you. I don't think people realize how strong they are spiritually. Your mind is the most powerful weapon in the world. Okay, there's nothing like it. You're, you're, you have a brain, and inside your brain, you're able to focus on things that you want. And if you do that, even in sports. Let me give, give, give you an example of something that happened to me when I was younger. <clears throat> One time we were out surfing, and we are at this place called Ponce Inlet. Now... It was a storm coming and it was the waves were getting bigger gradually by the day when we went out to surf at about seven in the morning the waves were around a solid four to six foot and uh, the shore pound was a solid two to three foot okay that's the faces of the waves or the back of the waves when you measure them they measure from the back so as the day went on there was an outside break that started developing and that got bigger now we're looking at eight six to eight foot and then it got bigger and bigger. So my friend and I were out there and now the, the average smallest wave was around 10 foot, okay? 10 foot back, which is huge, okay? And if you're not used to surfing something like that, it'll scare you, you know, it, and that's what happened. My friend got scared and got stuck out there, okay? He couldn't paddle, we couldn't paddle him out to the jetty to get on the jetty to go back in or any of that shit. So I'm like, I was like, dude, visualize you surfing on a tiny wave, man. And I was like, just visualize yourself surfing and you're doing great and how fast you're going to go and how much fun this is going to be. And you're going to be okay because stuff like that can be life threatening, folks. If you fuck up on a wave that's 20, 30 foot or 20 foot or 15 foot or anything like that, even small waves, 
you can get thrown to the bottom of the ocean, break your damn neck or something, you know, like that kind of shit can happen to you. Your leash can break off your board and you can be stuck out there in 15 foot surf that comes in 15, you know, 15 to 20 second, you know, intervals. So you you know, it's life threatening. So this, my friend, which is like, he's tall as me. I'm only five, seven. I'm not a tall fella. He is big as me. And we were little guys, but I had already surfed bigger waves because I was at Patrick's Air Force Base uh, down in uh, Canaveral and the waves were big and I got used to that. And only there, and, and in that place, you can't really surf the shore pound. It's dangerous because um, the actual have pieces of the of A1A in the ocean. So it sticks out sometimes. So when you're surfing, you have to surf, you know, out to the outside break and then you ride it all the way. But you can see the rocks and shit, but I kick out way before that because if your fence catches it you can rip your fin out of the board and you can cut your leash and stuff like that so anyway i'm out there half an hour my friend and you know it's like let's paddle out dude let's go further and uh and then i was like and then he, i just got him moving and then you know and i was like let's go and i was like dude I, he's like well how do i do this i was like bro do not hesitate like you have to go for this okay like when you drop in on a wave, on a 15 foot wave, you have to go all out. You cannot pull out of the wave and change your mind not to go. So man, he took off on this wave. I'm sitting there outside, you know, waiting to catch myself a wave. He took off on this wave. It was like a 15 foot wave. And he dropped in and was hauling ass and turned in and got into this big tube. And then all you can hear is my friend screaming, going, yeah, he was screaming. Now he visualized that, dude. He that's how you do these things. You have to be positive and you can't have naysayers around you. Like everybody's trying to tell you what you can't do all the time. You got to be like somebody's got to be like it's okay, man. Good try. You know? That's how I am in tennis and sports. Like there's been times where I've been the best player on the football field or I was just, you know, up there with the best players and other teammates start dogging each other I'm like, "Dude, we got to play better than this. We're playing as a unit, man." Like, like encourage these guys, help them out, give them encouragement, and you know, like good tackle, good try. This is I was like, but that's how I gotta fucking be out here. And then when I do tennis, when I play doubles, I'm always like that. I compliment my opponents all the time, um, you know, because I'm out there trying to learn how to play tennis correctly or, or live life correctly too. And uh, it's just a good feeling to be able to 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 watch other people do other you know do things also, to hit good shots or to win or do anything that, that, that they like to do and, and be successful. I never wish harm on anybody. The only people that I don't like are these people that are destroying our world and it's just one group of them. It's a small group and thank God people are waking up to it. So I don't wish harm on anybody. And you know, I even had, uh, I had made a bad mistake a few years ago because I didn't know about AI and then one of my friends, Jake the Asshole, there was somebody that I didn't even know about was making these fucking videos of him saying the most horrible shit and doing the most, and it was fucking fake as fuck. And I didn't told you, Jake, I said, I apologize. I didn't know, dude, I had no idea. I thought it, it looked real. And then I'm like, this shit's probably fucking fake. And then he's like, it's, a, you know, like we're friends now. Cause he's more smarter than I am about this technology with computers and stuff. And I'm fucking naive about shit. If I see someone on a video and it looks like them talking and you're going to assume it is. And then when you look into it, it's fake as fuck, you know? So just be positive, folks, and forgive each other. You know, like like if there's misunderstandings and stuff, just forgive people. It's okay. And, and I'm not on here encouraging people to do lottery times, okay? If you feel, if you have an urge and you feel... A certain way, you pray on it, and just it, and just don't go buy anything. You know, just get the thing that you think that's gonna win, and then when you win, get your profits and get the hell out of the get ball game. You know, don't be greedy. That's that's the thing. And I, I wanted to show you what I purchased yesterday um, with my money from the. I got this. It's a Snoopy thing. Uh, I got this at the at the thing at the at the thrift store, the Epiphany thrift store. When I won my money, I got this for Ashley. Bless you. There's more though, folks. There's more. I wanted to leave on a good note. Now watch, he'll do another one. There's another one. 
Look at him jamming. Now I was at the Epiphany and they wanted $10 for it and everything was marked off at half price. That was Christmas stuff. So this was marked at 10, so it was only five bucks. So that's what I did with some of my money. I got a little Santa Claus. I got Ashley a, a, a Santa Claus bear. He's a bear that's like got all kinds of Santa Claus stuff on him and shiny and got a foil and stuff. So I got that for her. And I was just saying, like you're supposed to spend money with the communities that you live in and support areas. Like that's this Epiphany Church. They get, literally give out free food every uh, twice a week at one of these uh, pantries down here. And you don't have to be a Catholic. They don't care who you are. All you have to do is, you know, live in the area. So, and if you live on the other side of the bridge, you can go to St. Paul's and they do the same thing. They'll give you free stuff, clothes, food, everything. So I see that kind of stuff with my own eyes and people may say what they want to say about some of these churches, but the, the church that I used to go to uh, when, a long time ago, I don't go to churches anymore. I, I go to church here in my house. Um, they were always good to people. I mean, the communities, anything, they pay people's water bills, electric bills, all kinds of stuff. And they are the richest organization in the world. So I'm very surprised there wasn't any kind of retribution back uh, after the, that, that building, uh, that church got blown up. The uh, St. Saint, Saint Sophias, Saint Sophias or something like that. Uh, it's the third oldest Orthodox Christian church in the world, and it got blown up a month ago when people were trying to hide, uh, you know, from the war and uh, Israel uh, accidentally or something. Um, and I would have to assume that it had to be an accident for them to blow up a church with innocent people in it, because I couldn't imagine uh, anybody really doing that intentionally. Uh, how evil would you have to be? Oh, wait a minute. I'm wrong. They do. They did do that intentionally. Uh, it's my bad. So, yeah, they admitted it. That's why. But not everything is is negative, folks. I just, uh, you know, I'm saying things to let you know that don't blame yourself and don't be so hard on yourself when you're when you're fighting an insurmountable uh, evil in the world. Okay. So just just just, just kind of disconnect yourself. Pray, be spiritual, and know that things are going to get better. And visualize your achievements and be proud of what you've done. If you're a mother and a father on here and you have children, you're a great person. You're raising your kids. You're, you have accomplished more than a lot of other people have. So don't worry about what how, kind of house you live in or what kind of car you drive or what kind of clothes you wear or dad needs a new pair of shoes or mama needs a new pair of shoes. Everybody needs a pair of shoes. You know, you got to make a fucking joke out of some things in your life and laugh at yourself because we're all, it's all absurd. We just, you dude, at the end of the day, if you guys don't break out of this type of shit that's going on in this world and find goodness and mercy in your heart and, and forgive yourself and forgive others that have wronged you and listen to your inner self, like your inner speak. When it tells you to buy something like a lottery ticket or not to go down a certain road or anything, it all adds up the same way. You are, you, your mind and your body can pick up on stuff that you're totally unaware of. Like I just said, I just showed you a pamphlet of a frog, uh, that, a frog pamphlet that I found, uh, you know, on the way home. And then prior to that, 30, 40 minutes ago, uh, before I found it, I was actually visualizing myself as a kid uh, back in the D-Land in 1980 catching tadpoles, you know. And then I visualized myself today come walking home with a big winning ticket, and I had one. So, and I also, do, to keep this in mind, now I bought two tickets. I bought one ticket for $20, which I did not win on, okay. So I wasn't really there to buy that $20 ticket. That was a this a, that was something that I was like oh I fought on that one before so maybe I should try that you know that kind of thing so and then this one uh, the that was the ticket that I was supposed to go to buy just a ten dollar ticket that's all I was supposed to do but it's okay I got the ticket that I I was supposed to have and we won and like I say I do things with the money 
because it ain't too much to go to the Dollar Tree and get some ramen noodles. And I think there's six of them or seven, maybe eight of them. There may be eight and eight pack or a oh, 10 pack or five pack. Not 100% sure. Walmart's got the big ones. And I'll buy them and donate them to the church because at the end of the day, there's people living around that epiphany in the back of the church, in that back area. And it ain't hard to, to heat them up, the, the, the ramen noodles. You get a little water boiling and you can cook them things up in a couple of minutes. And it'll give somebody some food to eat. Because not all these people that live in these woods are drug addicts or uh, alcoholics and that type of stuff. They're actually people that work a job and just can't afford to pay the rent. Okay, that's where we're at in this country and that's what's wrong. And that's why I get upset about that type of stuff. You know, because this could stop overnight. We don't have to stand for this. Every person should have land. Every person should have a house. There should be no taxation on your wages. There should be a monthly tax on, the, on land that is, that is being used. Because at the end of the day, the, every, all the land really belongs to the community of the people that live in that area. And they allow people to pretty much lease the land by purchasing it and paying you know, taxes on it anyway. But instead of paying uh, taxes like that, you just pay every month, you're, you're pay, you have to pay taxes on your house. Or uh, not on your house, on the land. And you can have anything you want on it. And the other thing is we need to make our own products here in America. You know, everything needs to be made here. We have to shut our borders down and make things here. We have enough people for working times. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You can mark my words and see. This man is going to get us into a major World War III. And all these factories and shit that were shut down, you're going to see the same thing happen in, that happened in World War II. These factories are going to turn into factories of people making fucking bullets and airplanes and all kinds of shit. Mark my words and see. That's what they're doing. And don't be afraid if they do this, because uh, i just seen this movie that the Obamas put out where we're being attacked in America, and there's, uh, you know, they took out the satellite dishes, there's no communication, deaf, dumb, and blind, there's fake pamphlets being spread out, who's attacking them. Dude, if that ever happens, know who's attacking you is your own country. Nobody's gonna be able to fly fucking jet planes into a country without someone seeing them. And they, you know, they have to come from Mexico, Alaska, or Canada so and you know and don't ever think that our military doesn't have the capability to shoot a fucking jet out of the, out of the sky because they do <laughs> and they're all they're way ahead of most of the people in the world and that's why people haven't really tried to invade us yet but what they're gonna do is the old classic trick that they did in Russia and they're gonna they invaded Russia and uh, they actually destroyed about Let's see, I wouldn't say destroy. The proper term is murdered. 60 million Christians and 40 non-Christians and people of different religious and beliefs. From 19, uh, was it 1900, let's say 1900 to 1942, uh, over 100 million people were murdered by these people. And that's why Russia is, uh, you know, not uh, taking this shit from Ukraine because they know the outcome of what these Nazis are capable of doing. Zionist and what they do is they infiltrate your country they start people to have a racial wars because they made up all the terms they made the terms racism they made the term anti-semitic they make they make all these terms to get groups of people to fight against each other because these people never fight their own war they never fight their own war they get other people to fight and they sit back and watch the destruction and evil that they cause and that's what's happening here in America that's why you got to try transgender. This has been going on for a long time, folks. I personally don't care what people do with themselves. If it just leaves children out of it. I think any civilized society can agree on that. And that's what's going to happen. And you guys want Trump, you're going to get Trump. He's going to come into office and you're going to see that he's the Antichrist. And he's going to rain hell down on these people. And he will, at one point... Uh, make his office into over in Israel so it's all going to come to a grinding halt though because you can't keep doing evil without people standing up against it okay and you don't have to fight you could just not do anything <laughs> that like Gandhi did and uh, be passive aggressive so I wish everybody the best I just want you to know that you, your, your neighbor is not your enemy okay your enemy is 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 people that have the the way to put this is 
these folks come from the bloodline of Cain, and um, that's that's the truth. Okay, they come from the bloodline of Cain, and Cain killed Abel. So there's no there's no good or, or in them. Okay, there's they're evil, and there never will be any good in them. There's no truth in them because they have no truth in them. They can't speak no truths, as Jesus said. Jesus knew who these people were, and that's what got him murdered. <laughs> he knew that they were Edomites and Sodomites, and also from the bloodline of Can their Cain, Can Canaanites. And they just adopt identities and, and, and for any purpose, for land, for safety. They're known. They're, they're Khazarian Ashkenazis. They come from uh, the Mongolian era. Or they migrated because they got kicked out of China for trying to rule the world. You know, once uh, once uh, Genghis Khan was defeated. So there's a lot of history folks don't know about, and that's some of the stuff that should be teach, taught in schools. And I have a plan for schools too, but um, it would take a little time for me to talk about it. So I spoke for ten, uh, you know, for a little while, and I just want to let everybody know that I appreciate it. Everybody, see you when we won, and uh, you know, I'm gonna like I say. I'll put 10 bucks into it, get my 90 bucks back, and I might go to get Ashley some Chinese food tonight because we haven't um, have had that in a while. And um, the people down the street um, make good food, and for like 30 bucks, you get a lot. I mean, I have enough to share with Chadley, uh, Melissa, and Ashley. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, and little Joshua. So uh, me and Ashley always try to do that. Our family lives right next door to us. I live next door to my mother in law. Pray for me, please. I love her. She's my schoolmate too, one of my schoolmates. So listen, folks, keep in mind and never forget this. God loves you, and so do I. I love you guys. That's why I make these videos.